This is Ready News Review, the podcast. And now, now, America's independent voice, Rob Ready. Rob Ready. It's time for Talking Tough with Dr. Tommy Curry every Thursday. As if you can't get enough of the man, he's here still with us for Talking Tough with Dr. Tommy Curry. Dr. Tommy Curry, what are we talking about today? Uh, today I want to talk about the failure of the black intellectual. Let's do it. All right, so as you know, we were just talking about Tyler Perry. Black people love to create an idea that they have to attack. And what I think is really interesting about cultural critics like Perry and the people who are criticizing him is that they're looking at stereotypes and they're trying to make those stereotypes very relevant to their real lives. But black people, specifically black scholars, they benefit from stereotypes about black people too. I have this saying that I always put up on my Facebook page. It's only when you study black people that blogs become more important than research. And what I mean by that is that when we take the study of black people, black intellectuals, black academics, they like to talk about black people as popular culture subjects. It's always our struggle now. It's always our interest now. It's about who's fighting with each other now. How should we define ourselves? You see no other group of people, no other racial group doing so much to define an identity in a way that black people are because they don't want to be fundamentally associated with what they take to be degraded. So you don't see white scholars who are interested in race and racism saying we really need to find out what this white thing is. No one questions it. But when you look at black scholars and black intellectuals, they're the first one to do so. And this questioning isn't an honest question. It's not like we're objectively trying to find out what black people were and what black people lost. E. Franklin Fraser criticized black people back in the 60s because he said, when you look at African intellectuals, they try to find out what colonialism took from their people. Black people want to talk about their living conditions, the material conference, uh, conference under civil rights. So what that means is black people are willing to talk about what they don't have next to the white person, the white group in American society, which is why most of the popular culture criticism and even the political theory that's coming out of black cultural, uh, black academics today is really about how black people are not enjoying the same material comforts as their white counterpart, rather than why fundamental structures like capitalism, militarism, racism, sexism, etc., are fundamentally debunked and why it crushes American democracy. So what black people do is they create these formulas. Now, we like to pretend that the only people that create formulas are going to be the people, the ideologues like Tyler Perry. But black people create formulas, too. They love it. And what I mean by that is that when you look at black scholarship, there will be a set pattern of the ideas that they, that they say we need to talk about. There's a few of them. The first is that black people from slavery now can be read as desiring integration. So every black person, no matter what they did, people like Delaney who said we should leave America, and that would become integrationists. The other thing is that they always they demonize black men. They'll say that black men inspire political organizations like the American Negro Academy or the Black Power Movement excluded and oppressed black women, and as such, we should erase them and do away with them. Now, on the certain hand, they're correct. There was a type of exclusion, even though integration was not the dominant form of racial representation of progress back in the 1800s. But that aside, there was exclusion. But what you get from that now is it's replaced with this type of integrationist idea that we can all get along, whereas other black radical organizations, even black socialist organizations back in the day, said that that was something that couldn't be done. The other thing is that he constantly says that black people, black men who fought and gave up their lives for the civil rights movement sought to dominate women and excluded the queer experience. So that's another thing. All the literature follows the same type of thing. And then, of course, the last part, and you can find this in practically every popular or dominant uh, political theory, is that black people must reject blackness, that we're all anti-essentialists now. We really just want to be human beings. We don't want to be labeled as black. So these are the types of stereotypes. These are the types of ideas and formulas that black people use in dominant scholarship to make sure that their work becomes popular and becomes cited. Nobody wants to encounter real radical thinking. No one wants to even talk about why black people want to escape blackness so quickly. What they want to do is feed into the same types of stereotypes that are already dominant in American society. Construct black men as criminals. Construct black men as being, as being rapists. Well, how do, we, how do we get away from that? How do we get rid of this radicalism? We talk about black women, but we say that the black women in the academy, the black feminists are the ones that have the knowledge, the black people who are just the poor housewives, the working class women who like Tyler Perry, who are Christian, are all misguided. We can disagree with what we see in black communities and black society in general, but to demonize those populations as if they have no knowledge, no contribution, no activism that is fundamentally formed and in many ways created the type of uplift necessary for black people to talk about black people in the academy is just a disservice. 
It assumes that black people in the world can't have any thoughts about what's actually happening to them. And what's, what, what's most upsetting about this is that black academics who are removed from the class struggle, who are removed from the type of racial violence because they're professors at elite institutions, because they're professors with certain economic privileges, get to write about these black people as if they're part of the group, as a way for them to accelerate and progress through the academy. As if the social injustice that poor black people uh, suffer through police brutality, through not having health care, through disease and all other types of violence, somehow justify them making progress in a white institution and a white institution and an academy that has no visibility, no consciousness, and no awareness of what actual black people go through. Black academics continue to use the black poor as the basis for their acceleration and their currency uh, to start conversations with white people in the academy, and that's something that we need to question. We have to question these formulas, and the black public should hold them accountable. Dr. To Tommy Curry, how can folks get in contact with you? Twitter at Dr. TJC. You've been listening to Ready News Review, the podcast with America's independent voice. Rob Ready, presented by Ready Communications Incorporated. For all the pressing news you need to know, log on to www.readynewsreview.com.